want to introduce to you uh, Dominic Ernst, who's going to talk to us about exactly what Acrea Network is achieving. And uh, he will be talking about bridging the blockchain and the real world. Sometimes you're trying, to, you're trying to figure out exactly what the real world means and how can we really pretty much apply it on the blockchain perspective. So here is Dominic, and he is going to try and demystify all of this stuff for us. And uh, stay tuned and watch out and ask your questions so we can engage with him towards the end of the session. Dominic, stage is yours. Thank you for the quick introduction. So, yeah, hi, guys. How's it going? Uh, I'm Dominic, and yeah, today we will talk a little bit about um, bridging the blockchain and the real world. I'm really glad to be here, so yeah, let's get started. So as I said, uh, I'm Dominic, I'm the CEO of Acrea Network, and um, yeah, I'm a German developer. I've worked for the biggest companies in Germany, and today, today we will talk a little bit about oracles. Oracles, what are they? So oracles are really important for us. Because oracles, without oracles, DeFi systems couldn't exist. So blockchains are isolated networks. So they cannot pull or push data to external networks uh, out of the box. So you need something to do that instead. And oracles are solving exactly this problem. But what are oracles good for? Let me give you a few examples. For example, dynamic NFT. So imagine you have a soccer trading card with the player, uh, name of the player on it, the age, um, citizenship, height, position, caps and goals. And the player in the real world achieves a goal. So you want to have uh, the dynamic NFT to update to actually uh, display the right number of goals on it. So in this example, if it achieves a goal in the real world, it changes from uh, 71 to 72. So to do that, you have to, yeah, as I said before, um, have a bridge between the real world and the blockchain. And this is the Oracle. So if you want to have the actual number of goals, you ask the Oracle, which then asks um, an API provider externally from the internet, which gives you um, the actual number of goals. So you can feed it back into your dynamic NFT. A second use case would be crop insurances. So a grower can conclude a crop insurance contract when he wants to protect himself from bad crop yields in form of a smart contract. So the smart contract is requesting weather data of the past and compares them to predefined uh, thresholds. They can be defined uh, by the insurance company or by the grower itself. And um, when there is too much or too less rainfall during the coverage period, for example, clients, in this case, the grower gets paid quickly and automatically um, when certain triggers are met. So the grower can be sure that um, the insurance is always working and um, deciding what he expects from it. So, yeah, if there's too, too much rain or too, too less rain, um, you will automatically get paid uh, the insurance uh, reward. The last use case I want to mention is uh, supply chain. And using an Oracle, it is not possible to keep blockchain. Um, it's not only possible to keep blockchain and the common data you get from an API, for example, from um, yeah, delivery um, services. Um, these data you can get in sync. But it's also possible, for example, to, to save and monitor temperature, humidity, et cetera, um, of the grocery and uh, save it tamper proof to the blockchain. So that data is always available and it is also possible to create automatic payments or refunds um, if some data are or aren't uh, within desired thresholds. For example, um, if the delivery was too long for I think bananas or something like that, the grocery store will automatically get uh, a partial or a complete refund because uh, it cannot guarantee the customer anymore the freshness of the fruits. These examples are only the beginning of what oracles can do and what they are good for. So let me explain a little bit in detail how oracles actually, actually work. So you have your smart contracts and the blockchain on one side. And the World Wide Web 
the external network on the other side. And these two worlds are completely separated by each other by design. So you can't talk from one world, the smart contract in the blockchain, to the internet out of the box. So you need something that bridges these two worlds together. And this bridge is uh, the Oracle. In your smart contracts, for example, you can ask the Oracle for specific data. And the Oracle re requests a validated external API provider and retrieves the data, validates it, and writes it to the blockchain. So the smart contract can execute its um, desired uh, thing more and more uh, further on. And yeah, the smart contract will work as expected and you know, everyone is happy, let's say that. <laughs> and yeah, but there's a big problem with it. Um, the problem is called, it's the Oracle problem. And yeah, blockchain is all about decentralization. And the problem describes that when you use a central Oracle, the whole decentralization of blockchain is in danger. So central oracles can be prom compromised and therefore smart contracts can be executed with the wrong data. This causes a huge problem to your applications and the DeFi market um, at all. So for example, if you yeah, request the, data, the, the current price of gold and um, the oracle is compromised, so you will receive the wrong data, your smart contract will, yeah, for example, execute too early or too late. And this will cause um, some transactions, for example, to uh, yeah, cause too, too early or too late. And this will get you in huge, huge problems um, in your application. But is there really a solution? So current, currently, Oracle systems um, are out there that can mostly guarantee that the data requested is as valid as possible. And this is the goal, the main goal of it. So you want to trust the data you will receive from an Oracle. And yeah, this is a huge problem and a huge, um, a huge uh, disbenefit for, for everyone. And so there are some solutions out there that want to solve this problem. And yeah, this will bring me to our project. It's the Korea Network. And we exactly developed an Oracle system that want to solve this problem. And yeah, there, as I said, there are other solutions out there such uh, as Chainlink or the band protocol. And yeah, the, what makes us so special and unique is that we have no middlemen. So the data comes directly from the data owner. And we also integrated a reputation system as well as a monetized uh, incentive to deliver only the high quality and validated valid data to the network. And yeah, this enables users of the network to fully trust the data that is provided. And yeah, so you can be sure that the data you receive um, is as valid as possible. And yeah, this, this was a quick introduction to, to Oracles and Acrea in particular. If you have any questions, um, please contact us and my team and I will answer your questions as soon as possible. You can also join uh, our network groups, uh, Telegram, something like this. And yeah, you will get the latest news from us. And yeah, thank you very much for this talk and yeah, have a great remaining conference. Fantastic. Thanks a lot, Dominic, for your uh, presentation and contribution to this conference, to this event. Um, there is perhaps one question. I think your, your presentation was quite insightful with regard to oracles and whatnot. There's one question with somebody asking exactly uh, when do you think um, this will be available to use? So, yeah, um, currently we... We were developing it further, so we um, want to release it on a test net um, in a few months. And um, yeah, we'll be hopefully release it um, later this year. So yeah, as I said, we're currently in development, so we're figuring out um, what is the best practice um, um, building this Oracle solution as, uh, yeah, as safe as possible. And um, yeah, then later this year, hopefully we can go live. 
The other question that I pick uh, is how, how do you compare with other blockchain and other oracles, such as Atom, Cosmos, or uh, BNB Smart Chain? Uh, what would you say really stands out for you? So, yeah, um, the main benefit is, as I said before, is that we have no middlemen. So um, the data comes directly from the data owner. So there's there are no uh, anonymous oracle nodes. There are only the data owner nodes. So, for example, if you want the weather data, um, for example, from weather.com, only weather.com is able to to um, host um, such an Oracle node. So you can be sure that the data that is provided comes only from the data owner. And, um, yeah, therefore, it, uh, you can be sure the data is valid as possible. All right. Uh, do, do you think that this could be uh, used perhaps for international trading with uh, smart contracts paying out only once uh, cleared through customs, for example, with uh, penalties automatically embedded into smart contracts? If, for example, there is a break in the cold chain uh, when importing a perishable uh, product. So, yeah, you, um, this solution. Yeah, yeah sorry. Go on, go on, please go on. So, yeah, this um, solution can be used uh, in many different uh, shapes. So in also in very different markets. So it's the DeFi market or, for example, yeah, as I said, um, supply chain, um, dynamic NFTs. But um, there's so so many um, use cases for, for oracles to, to help to um, yeah, develop new applications that um, haven't been possible before. So... Yeah, smart contracts um, will get more and more uh, use cases as well. So, yeah, the automatic trading or something like this. All, all these things are possible um, with oracles. So they are a huge, um, huge element in the blockchain scene. And uh, yeah, we think this can go uh, way further. Somebody's saying, okay, well, Oracle is a, is a trusted uh, third party. Do, do you think there's a bit of a centralization to, 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 to Oracles uh, for whatever you're building? Or do, do you believe in a fully decentralized world and, and as such, the Acrea network will definitely subscribe to that vision? So, yeah, the, the goal, the main goal is always to be as decentralized as possible so that you don't have any central point to, to trust on. And, yeah, as I said before, the Oracle problem always um, exists and um, the Oracle solutions out there. Um, so are we um, trying to solve this problem as far as we can. And um, sure, an Oracle network is some kind of a um, central point in the, the blockchain. But um, yeah, in our case, we try to, to solve this by only getting data from um, data owners. So this data is as valid as possible. We always uh, implement an, a reputation system for the Oracle nodes, so the users can stake their tokens to the Oracle nodes to give it a, um, as, yeah, to give them their trust and the credibility. And yeah, there are some techniques um, we are all we also do, uh, developing that um, yeah can it, can get it so near to decentralized as uh, as we can. So yeah. <laughs> Okay. Uh, of course, whenever there is a new project, uh, many people are very much interested about uh, whether they can actually invest early. So somebody's asking the question, is investment available on any exchanges? Do, are you guys listed somewhere or do you, do you have any plan uh, to list on an exchange uh, anytime soon? Uh, what's, your, what's your take on that? So, yeah, um, currently we are running an ICO on our website. So, um, yeah, you can early invest um, there. And yeah, we are planning to to get listed on uh, some big exchanges, but uh, yeah, I can't um, mention here some detailed information because it's quite confidential right now. Fair enough, fair enough. All right, uh, Dominic, really thank you very much indeed for your contribution. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are uh, going to take a break, and uh, this break is going to be a uh, rather long lunch because uh, Dominic was able to squeeze his presentation in uh, 15 minutes uh, shorter than the allocated time. So I invite you guys to go on a break right now and uh, I shall see you back in about 45 minutes. Please enjoy your lunch and stay tuned. And by the way, uh, Dominic, if you don't mind uh, sharing your presentation and or any other links uh, 
into the uh, actually I see that you've added uh, in the handout section, uh, mm -hmm. so people can actually go ahead and uh, and do so. And by the way, I invite you all as well. Um, the networking session are happening, whether we are going on virtual lunch or anything like that. Um, I'm enjoying my coffee here. Uh, I hope you do the same, and I virtually share that with you guys. But at the same time, I invite you to see your our VIP guest everybody who might be available to have a conversation. So Dominic is there. Uh, whenever you go there and you see somebody with a green dot, uh, note that he is available for an immediate engagement, a conversation with you all. Um, that's definitely part of the networking session. And by the way, uh, go to the booth as well. Uh, people are uh, exhibiting in the booth. Uh, so if you don't mind getting in there and asking relevant questions as to uh, what they are doing, uh, continue building momentum, continue building relationships. And I remind, remind each and every single one of you guys that uh, Crypto.com is a premier uh, sponsor for this specific event. And uh, we welcome you all. And I thank you for being a participant uh, from anywhere around the world, wherever you're actually dialing from. Thank you, guys. And I'm going to go and take a short break. <music>